And now I want to do two accessors that will actually serve for different purposes, but they are somehow maybe easy to get confused. So let me explain that. Number one, given that this particular array is going to be initialized to be of size five, I want to be able to see exactly the shape of the array. Initially, all the five slots will just be null. And then as time goes by, as I'm adding more entries, maybe partially, maybe the first three elements of the uh, array will be non-null, and the remaining two slots will be null. I, want, I would like to return just this array specifically so that I can uh, make some, uh, write some assertions on the JUnit uh, test package to see uh, exactly what the shape is and do some assertions. So the first uh, accessor method I would like to define would be, I would say public, and the return type should be an entry array, okay? You can see the type over here is the same as the type over here, right? And then we'll say get private entries array. Okay, so the name here, I try to make it as explicit as possible. So the purpose of this uh, method here is very simple. We want to get access to the internal private array, just the array. We don't need to do any massaging or any processing. We don't need to. It will be the purpose for the other method that I'm going to define. So this one, how do we define that? Which is a return this dot entries. Okay, very simple. Just return the array. And we, the reason we have to de declare this public method, uh, accessor method is we want to follow the principle that all the attributes in the class should be private. That's why you, if you really want to get access to some private attributes, if you need it, in that case, you have to create a public accessor. Okay, we're just following that principle. Okay, let me uh, go to the center over here. The other one I want to do is, uh, I want to retrieve only the non-null entries in the array, in the order of the chronological sequence uh, where they were inserted. Okay, so the uh, it's gonna return an array and the, the front indices of the array is gonna store those early insertions uh, into the array. Okay, let me uh, write it down and then we'll trace that later. And that's also covered in the written notes. So I'm gonna say public and the same return type over here, simply just entry over here. And then I'll say get entries. Okay, so you can think about like this. Retrieve the array of entries arrange in the chronological order in which they were inserted. That is, the earlier an entry is uh, was inserted, the more front it appears in the return array. Okay? Chrono logical order okay good and of course the index zero of the return array should be the earliest one that was inserted and index uh array that length minus one the last index should really give you the one that's latest uh the latest inserted right and etc how do we do that apparently we cannot simply do return this dot entries anymore because it is possible that partially of the array, they might still be nonce because we, the, the array is simply not filled up. So we cannot just return this array directly. I will use assertions to actually uh, explicitly specify this. So if you simply say return, this uh, entries over here is not, it's going to fail the assertion that we're gonna write. So instead, we have to actually do a little bit of processing over here. And it's also quite standard. I need to return an array eventually, so why don't I uh, declare some local array so I, I can just do some um, computation on the local array. So that's the pattern I spoke about for accessor method. Okay, let's declare some local array. So entry, and then let me call that ES, entries. A new entry. And what should be the size? Well, the size of the return array corresponds to how many entries that have been inserted already. Do we have such a uh, value? Well, we do. We have NOE. NOE because remember one of the purposes is actually for uh, recording how many entries have been inserted so far. So that will actually be a, be a very good indication. So I would say here this dot NOE. So that should be the size. And after that, we uh, we actually want to copy over the references of the entries that have been stored in the entries array from left to right 
from index zero to index one, index two, index three, all the way to NOE minus one. Okay, because NOE indicates the next uh, new entry uh, to be stored. So NOE should not be included, right? All right. If you are feel, uh, feeling a little bit lost, that could be of, uh, because of two reasons. Number one, you haven't seen any visualization, but that's okay. I'm going to do that uh, later. Number two, you may not have gone over the written notes. In that case, you really have to do your part. Okay. Okay. Let me just see how we can do this. For integer i and also, of course, you got to review the syntax for the for loop. You can also convert this into while loop if you wish, but for loop should be the uh, most convenient way to write this. So index uh, i is assigned to zero, and i strictly less than this uh, NOE, which means NOE is not going to be included, i++. plus plus. Okay, and then we're going to copy over. And the entry, oh, eventually, eventually we want to return es, eventually. You can, this is declaration of the local variable, and we are returning that local array, and we are now doing some computation to make sure the array, when returned, is properly uh, prepared. Okay, so we're going to say every slot in this local array is going to copy over the reference of the entry objects in the corresponding slot in the entries array, right? So we're going to say, in that case, I'll say this dot entries over here, just the corresponding index, okay? So from index zero of the entries array, copy that over to index zero of the ES array. And also from index one of this array, and copy that over to uh, index one of the the ES array, right? Just always the same index, and we're gonna do this repetitively from zero until NOE minus one. That's what we're doing. So that will be uh, this method here. So you really want to understand conceptually the difference between this and also this. Both of them are actually returning an array. Both of them, but the uh, the conceptually they ha uh, have different meaning. Okay, which I already explained. Let me now go for another set of methods before I write the test cases, okay? Let's now see how we can add entries into the uh, collection, okay? So let me just define that. I want to give you three different versions. So I can say public void add entry and then entry E, right? So this will be the first version. I want to be able to say, I want to add entry and the user only has to give, give to me an entry object. So this will be the easiest version. And just for now, we're going to make the assumption, which I will relax later, but just for now. For now, assume that the serial number of input entry E does not exist in the collection. So this means the entry that we are adding here, remember there are two attributes for the entry. The one that can uniquely identify a product will be the serial number. And we assume we are assuming that so far in the store, we have not got we have not uh, gotten that particular serial number. We'll handle uh, what if we do have it uh, later. But for now, just make the assumption that uh, it does not exist. So it'd be easier for us for now. Okay. This is, will be the first version here. I'll do the implementation in a moment, but what about this, uh, the overloaded version? I want to show you two overloaded versions. The second one will be void and add entry, the same name. Here, we're going to give some distinct list of parameters. So rather than giving an entry objects, I want to give the necessary information that will also be able to allow the implementation to create some local entry objects, which we see, which we saw in the earlier video. Okay, so what about I can give a serial number assuming that it does not exist. Okay, the, uh, the same assumption. And also the associated products. Okay, so this is one. Oh, products. Okay, just make sure there's no typo. Okay, that'll be the second version. What about the third version? The third version will be in a, following the same uh, similar line. So let's say here, Basically, rather than asking the user to actually pass a product object, can we just pass some necessary information instead that would be enough for creating some product objects internally, locally? Yeah. And if, uh, let's say, public void and entry. So we still get a serial number over here, but now rather than simply just products, okay? And if you recall, let me just record, uh, let's recall very quickly. If you go back to the product class 
and we we do have an overloaded version of the constructor which will take model and also original price why don't we use that one okay so rather than passing a products over here we're gonna have the string model and we're also gonna have the uh, double original price oh sorry should be a name Re original price so now we got three versions over here and of course i need to fix the typo over here public okay let's see how we can define this and the, this is a very standard way of doing it so i will simply spell it out and then you can also refer to explanation in the written notes if you wish and about I'll visualize exactly how that works okay the way to do that is remember with the second purpose for the uh, noe as i explained before in, in the case the index of the entries array that will store the next new entry reference so now we are exactly now in this timing so now we want to add a new entry to the next available slot in the array so what we will do is we'll say this star entries array we want to update it and we want to say add the next available slot which will be indicated by noe counter and that should be assigned to e after this we want to make sure the next time if we call add entry once more this uh this dot noe is not going to uh, stay the same value otherwise we're going to overwrite whatever we have written so far so we should really increment its value so we'll say this dot noe plus plus so this will be the two lines of implementation i'll trace that together with you uh in a moment so this will be uh and the other two will just follow the same logic let's see the other two let me show you the one that will actually smell meaning that we're going to get repetitions and we'll see how to improve it by somehow calling helper methods okay so hopefully that will be a nice review on the helper methods as well okay for this one here will be very similar to uh this version will be very similar to this except that we need the entry object first of all because we don't have the entry objects in this case so why don't we create some entry objects right away so we can say entry over here e uh we can say new entry oh sorry new entry is assigned to new entry over here serial number and then product right that's how you create a new entry and then after this we can basically copy and paste so let me just make uh make it more explicit for you we can copy these two lines and then put it over here rather than e is going to be ne okay so ne is re referring to the ne over here new entry all right and what about this one over here this one i can say first of all let's create a products product p is assigned to new products and then these two information will be enough for creating a new product objects so model and also original price and then how do we create an entry accordingly well easy we can say new uh, entry and then uh new entry is assigned to new oh sorry you and e new entry over here and then it will be serial number and also the product right you can see the serial number here is referring to the serial number from the input parameter and the product p here is referring to the new p that we just created based on the two model and original price from the input parameters okay after that we can copy and paste let's copy these two lines and paste it over here okay right you can see apparently the code actually smells very badly because this these two lines are repeated one time two times and also three times so we will what we would like to do is to really define that only in a single place and then try to re reuse it whenever um applicable so there's an important software design principle anyway it's called a single choice principle but uh you don't need to be bothered by the name of the principle you just don't want to have any repetitions so how can we uh improve this let's say this is the only place that we want to declare uh define these two lines anywhere that we want to use uh re reuse these two lines we simply recall simply uh call this method here that's what we're going to do so these two lines rather than this okay i'm going to put it into comments we're going to say this dot when i say this is because the method i'm trying to call as a helper method exists in the same current class so that's why i can say this and this dot add entry 
And I got three versions over here for me to choose. I want to choose the one that has the single definition defined. In that case, that will, I will need to pass a new entry, right? Just like that. So this single line is equivalent to these two lines. All right. Following a similar logic, and I can also comment out forward slash or com uh, command forward slash. I can say this dot add entry similarly also any -E, right. So this line over here is also equivalent to these two lines. So now I'm I have el eliminated all the duplicates. So whenever I need to use these two lines, define it only once and then call the methods accordingly as a helper method. Right. Hopefully you can see that. One advantage that we will see very soon is given that the definition for add entry is only defined in a single place and everywhere else is only calling that as a reference over here, right? Calling the helper method, calling the helper method. Later on, when we try to relax this assumption here, when we need to change the definition over here, how many places do we need to change? Answer, only one. Alternatively, let's hypothetically, if we still use this version over here and also this version over here, when we change the definition here, after relaxing the assumption, we have to modify this as well and modify this as well. That means we got multiple places to make a change that will definitely violate some uh, software principle uh, for uh, for developments for sure. Okay. One more thing I would like to mention, which is about anonymous objects, right? Here, alternatively, rather than creating a new entry object, we definitely need to do that. And we store the uh, its address into NE and then pass NE directly over here. There is a better way. Uh, what if you want to use anonymous objects? So there's another way to do it. So let me comment out this line over here. Rather than this, I will simply pass just this part, the right hand side to the assignment operator. Just pass that. So this will also work. So what this does is this dot add entry over here is. Uh, presumably it's going to call this uh, version over here, which is uh, expecting some entry reference. And this is going to be in be interpreted by Java compiler. When you say new expression, in this case, you're going to create the uh, new entry objects on the fly and then retrieve its address and pass its arguments to this method here. Okay, that's also going to work. That's so-called anonymous objects. And what about how can we shorten these two lines? I can shorten, I can get rid of these two lines and make a single anonymous object. You want to pause the video and think about how you might do it. Okay, assuming that you have thought about it, let me now close this. I'll show you how I develop that. So I know that I need a new entry object. Just make it anon uh, anonymously. And the entry, okay, you can see I got simply new entry here. And then entry constructor will take two, uh, two arguments. The first one should be the serial number. I got a serial number already from the parameter. What about the second argument, which should be a product? Rather than passing a name object P, I can simply just get a right hand side over here. Okay, and then put it here. So this will also work. Whether or not using uh, whether or not to use a, a anonymous uh, objects is completely up to you. But at least you should know how to read them in case you you are looking at your uh, your coworkers work later in the workplace. So I think anonymous object is very useful when you don't want to create any name variables for storing the object references. All right, so that's about the methods I would like to de uh, define so far. And let's now, de uh, let's now define some JUnit test cases for assertions.